uh, the, the case does not overrule what is called Chevron deference, which is uh, a major source of power for the administrative state, but it does beef up the major questions doctrine, which is to protect the power of the people to, to uh, make their voices heard against the administrative agencies of the executive. What, what does this case do? So cutting to the bottom line, I think this case is, is an important victory, A, for democracy, for actually having control of policy, B, in the democratically elected branches of government, and B, for jobs and, and our ability to uh, pay our bills. So what this concerned was under the Obama administration, they rolled out what they called their clean power plan. And it was the EPA, it was a massive power grab to essentially shut down uh, coal-fired power plants across the country and force a transition to natural gas and to wind and solar. And to do so, the EPA itself admitted that its plan, the Obama EPA, would cost billions of dollars in the economy, would destroy tens of thousands of jobs. This was their own estimate and would drive up everyone's cost of energy. So that, that, that was the Obama administration's big present to America. Now, the, the plan has been litigated ever since the Obama administration. Under Trump, they rescinded the rule. Under Biden, they rescinded the rescission. In other words, they potentially teed it up again. Just when we've got $5 gasoline and electricity prices going through the roof, the Biden EPA was threatening to put yet more regulatory burdens driving up the cost of energy. And what the Supreme Court did is struck it down. It was a 6-3 decision. Uh, Chief Justice Roberts wrote the opinion. And what Chief Justice Roberts relied on is, as you mentioned it there, it's called the Major Questions Doctrine. The Major Questions Doctrine essentially says that, that if there is a regulatory decision that is a big deal, that has big consequences economically, politically, that Congress has to have been very clear in giving the agency the authority to do it that the court is not going to read in some vague, ambiguous language. In, in this case, the Obama EPA was relying on language that had been on the books for decades, had never been applied to have such a massive power grab. And the Supreme Court said, look, if, if you're looking at a regulation that is going to have a massive economic impact, you can do that, but Congress has to be really clear that it wants to give the agency that authority, that, it, that, that we're not going to read in uh, just through vague and ambiguous language. And I think that that's an important decision. One of the things the court relied on quite a bit is the fact that, that Congress had repeatedly debated cap and trade, had debated uh, putting a tax on carbon, had debated a lot of these policies, and had rejected it over and over and over again. And the court said, look, if Congress, when they try to vote on it, can't decide this is a good idea, we're not going to read into ambiguous language the ability for the agency to just circumvent Congress. So th this is a big win for the conservative who want to deal, de the conservatives who have for a long time wanted to deal a blow against the administrative state and against the EPA in particular. For goodness sakes, the EPA is the villain in Ghostbusters. They've been in our crosshairs for a very long time. 